Hi, um, we're at Eclectic Gallery. I'm John Taylor. And um, Efren just asked where I started photography. I started in Japan, actually, when I was uh, quite young. I um, was there for about six months, and I wanted a way of communicating what I was experiencing, what I was seeing, and it seemed that a camera was the ideal uh, vehicle for doing that. And um, a couple of years later, I was in Hawaii, and I, um, I was able to audit a photography program at University of Hawaii, and I had no idea that there was so much to learn and understand about photography. So I decided to enroll in the best photography school in Canada, which at that time was Ryerson, and I was accepted into the program based on um, a portfolio that I presented. And from the very get-go, I was really interested in supporting myself with my artwork. And um, in my second year, I helped produce a book on Toronto Union Station to um, preserve the station from demolition. And um, we invited some of the most prominent writers we could think of, including Pierre Burton and a number of others. Uh, the book became a bestseller. The proceeds went to the Union Station Committee to uh, fight the CNCP. And uh, it was successful. And uh, the, the um, railway were not allowed to demolish those buildings. And, um, and so it was a way for um, a small voice uh, to be able to speak up against a, a large corporation. And um, the work was taken out of my hands and was exhibited at Toronto City Hall. Uh, Ontario Arts Council purchased it, and it circulated as an example to other communities of how to save their heritage structures. Um, all of my negatives, work prints, and all of that were later purchased by the National Public Archive as a historic document uh, representing that that um, that building. Um, I went on to teach for several years um, and eventually um, I, I, I did receive a Canada Council grant and I traveled with that and, and I, I wanted to, I went to New York but I also went to Houston. I wanted to see what oil money was doing uh, for the arts and uh, I came across an amazing building, the Contemporary Art Museum in Houston and when I saw it this thought went through my head, I'd like to exhibit there. So I just walked in and I, I said, how does one get a show here? And they said, well you have to talk to the curators and so I met with a panel of six curators and um, eventually, I, you know, after um, making a presentation, I was offered a show there and uh, ended up living in Texas for about eight years, um, which became a really important period of my life. You know, it, it was a time of, uh, of a great production. I did, uh, one year I remember being involved in 12 shows and, and so the work was just going out constantly. And um, from that period of time, I, I developed, um, I wrote a thesis on uh, the Great Domes of Italy. And um, I was fortunate to receive um, funding for that project. And I was uh, able to spend four months in Italy uh, documenting these incredible buildings and creating uh, artistic images. Um, about that work, um, it was shown in the Victoria Art Gallery and across Canada, and um, I was invited to have a show in Rome of that work as well, which was very exciting. And uh, so that body of work was—it was ten years in planning, in, in researching it. Like every Friday, I'd go to the the School of Architecture Library and research books and find out you know, who these artists were, the, the architects and plant, you know, the builders of, of these great buildings. And, um, and it was a, a great lesson for me of really just focusing on what I wanted to do and making it happen. And, um, and I guess that's been kind of the story of my artistic career is really kind of coming up with an idea, following through. And it's kind of, every artist has like, their method of, of, of working and for myself it was it was always kind of I would create a plan or an idea and and create the body of work and then and then basically show it and, and sell it and, and move on and do something else so I moved through several different styles and um, 
you know, my work was constantly changing and evolving, and still is. And it's really the whole nature of photography is that it's it's been constantly in motion. It's never been a static medium. And so even from the earliest periods, like the daguerreotypes were only around for about seven years, and then they were replaced by amber types and tint types and, and several other processes. And so I've explored some early processes. I've taught um, uh, calotype printing at uh, the MISA, the Machosan International Summer School of the Arts. I've, I've taught probably thousands of photographers. Uh, one of the most interesting classes I, I ever taught was at the Texas School for the Deaf. And I, I presented an idea of teaching photography as a second language. And their first language is sign. And, and so I said photography um, could be you know, looked at as a visual language for them, a way of composing ideas and presenting ideas. And, and so the first, uh, the, the subject of that, that class, uh, or series of classes, I called Signs and Symbols. And, um, and so we talked about when a sign um, becomes more meaningful and it becomes a symbol of something greater. And uh, it was a, a very exciting program. You know, I really, really learned an incredible amount and, and had uh, some, I had a, an interpreter. I learned basic sign language, but um, they provided me with an interpreter so I could communicate more easily with the students. Um, I returned to Victoria um, about 25 years ago. And um, I, I've taught in a number of schools here, at the Victoria College of Art, the Western Academy of Photography, Camosun College. And um, my, my interest as an educator, as well as a producer of artwork, has always uh, sustained me. Um, seven years ago, my wife and I opened a collective gallery and I still, you know, I work on my own work when I can. You know, running a gallery is an immense amount of effort, but, um, you know, I, this is a, a retrospective of kind of slices of my career. And so seeing examples of work over the last 40 years. And so I've, um, I, I particularly love the hand colored series, and, and I've never shown them. It's a body of work that I kept producing and just putting in a, a portfolio. and. I, th I think I've shown maybe three or four of them. There was a, an international photo uh, exhibit in, in Tokyo. So I think four prints were in that. Uh, I showed a couple in, uh, one at New York University and one in Florida, a couple in, in Houston. And um, so this is the first time I've really shown uh, you know, a bigger selection of those. So my work continues to evolve and I, um, Right now I'm working with some gilding techniques. I'm learning, you know, teaching myself how to gild and, and I, I have a, some interesting ideas that uh, I'm approaching with that. Um, my current theme is, is about angels and so I have, uh, the last time I was in Italy I photographed uh, maybe 200 angels and I'm starting to work with that body of work and, and hope to produce another exhibit of those in the next few years. So uh, this, it's interesting that you ask this question because this image is a selfie, but it's a slow selfie. It's not just a hold and grab kind of shot. And, and I think that um, I learned so much in, in making this image because it, it, it had a lot of thought behind it and in, in terms of trying to understand how to photograph um, more uh, like a spiritual or ethereal kind of presence of myself and not just, you know, a physical snapshot. And, uh, you know, one of the, Susan Sontag talked about the photograph and that how many hundreds of millions of photograph snapshots are taken every year. And now it's hundred, you know, it's hundreds of billions probably of, of, of like click, click. And, and you see them once and you never see them again. And the idea of a, Instagram and of uh, being able to send and receive and and it's like what's the meaning of all that? It's like a, a, a second, you know, a millisecond of your life. But I wanted to represent in my work something that transcends that. And and I wanted to also have a feeling of of um, 
reality in, in many dimensions. Um, the, the idea of time being like an accordion, that it can expand and contract, and that we can control that expansion. And how a moment um, when you're you know, in great pleasure with friends, it seems to just expand and expand. And um, also I wanted to reference dreams and, and the state of dreams and how those images can also affect us. And, and so in many of my photographs, I, I feel like the dream is part of it. And so this is called Eagle Dancer. And there's a, there's a parallel image that goes with this that's called Shadow Dancer. And so they're a pair. And, and this is um, it's about uh, transformation. So, so the idea of the, the eagle spirit, you know, taking over my body and, and then, you know, flying with that eagle, you know, like of, of being able to, to go to other dimensions or to transform, transcend. Um, I, I think some of my most successful images are, are almost like accidental. Like, um, I remember one series that I did that um, I had a dream of, of seeing the light around a person's body. And then within that dream, it was like I could see my hands, and it was a photograph of, of that. And then I realized that it was my photograph that I was looking at. And I woke up, and I thought, how do I do that? And I recalled the dream, and then I started really trying to think of, of like how I could possibly photograph this light. And then I did a whole series of experimentation for months based on that, you know, working with everybody who was willing. <laughs> and it was the first series of work that just kind of went out and, and flew. You know, I just, I had shows and, and sold, you know, many, many of those images. And um, others uh, that are based on dreams, um, I can show you another that's a fragment of a dream. And the the image is, um, it, it, it's one of those fourth dimensional concepts where time and space um, are, are adrift. They're, you know, that the elements come together, but if they're not solidified. And, and I really like that quality in an image. You know, it's, it, I guess it's, it's more in the surrealistic vein, you know, where um, we live in several dimensions simultaneously and it's how you focus your attention whether you um, you know are in the here and now or in the eternal and you know everlasting you know it, it's it's all coincides so I guess that's my philosophy <laughs> so this is another dream image and in this dream uh, this figure in the trench coat was walking away from me on a beach and um, this is outside my studio window in Austin, and uh, it's on the rooftops. And so that roof kind of, to me, represented water. And so I, I, I had this figure, you know, in the trench coat walk away. And um, I was doing this as a, uh, I was like commissioned to do a photo shoot for like, a fashion boutique, you know, and I'm not a fashion photographer. And so I had two models, like this guy with the, the striped shirt was one, and this woman, you can only see her legs um, and hand. Um, and so I was able to ma manipulate them and to get the, you know, and I wanted to, um, to have the dream revealed. And so the, the idea of time um, having several, you know, dimensions in itself. So. So there's multiple exposures in each of these, and, and many of my most successful work has been has included that. You know, where where um, I've photographed different types of lighting simultaneously. Like you know, um, in this case, part of the exposure is at night, part of it's with flash, part of it's in the daytime. I left the camera on a tripod so I could complete it the next morning, and and. Um, I guess it's like planning in the subconscious where certain elements are, but also allowing chance to take and, and distort those images and create um, something unexpected. And, and it's those unexpected things that, that really, to me, are like a brand new image. You know? And so we tend to repeat ourselves and repeat ourselves. We take the same image, whether it's a painting or a photograph, and we repeat it until we learn.
you know, and then you go on and you, you create a new image. And so I feel like photography allows us to speed up that process. And so you, you kind of create, you get a, a, an idea or, a, you know, a text in your head that you want to illustrate or, or do. And then once you've done it, you move on and you create something else. This is a series called Double Negatives. And this is when color Xerox was, was a rage and it was a brand new medium. And so it's color xerography. This is actually a very micro image, but the, 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 work, the artwork itself was about six feet by four feet. So it was quite a large piece, and I, 1977. So I, I worked on scale, like dimension and scale were, were, in a, were important too. And um, one piece that I created that was it was called Parameters of Space, and it was actually a room in my house. And I, um, I, I was really thinking about how we see, like the process of seeing. And, and when you look at a room, like wherever you are, your eye tends to, to dart around, and you see you know, like little vignettes. And your mind assembles those vignettes, and you go, OK, that's a room. You know? And it's the same thing with memory. You know, your mind pulls fragments and um, you put them together and you call it experience. But you know, what are they? They're just like isolated fragments in your life. And if you could string those fragments together, you could be a writer, you could be whatever you wish. You know, it's part of the creative process. Can you talk about uh, your influences when you were just starting, when you were young and learning how to do all these techniques, who, who was who in the world that you really, really admire, and also who who you admire now and who you kind sure. of like. And um, there were a number of photographers. Uh, one was Freeman Patterson, and um, I had the opportunity of, of meeting him, which was incredible. And um, and he um, published some of my work. He he was then uh, the editor of Camera Canada magazine, and and he did a a profile of uh, the work that I did on Union Station. And then I also worked with Freeman uh, when he was um, building his studio and school at Champers Bluff. And so I spent um, a summer out there with him. And that brought me to New Brunswick. And I, um, I ended up in Sackville, where Mount Allison University is. and. Um, they had no photography program in their fine arts department, so I talked them into uh, considering it, and then they invited me to be the uh, instructor. And it was actually Lauren Harris Jr. who uh, who hired me, and it was his final year of teaching, and and then he retired. He was the son of uh, Lauren Harris, the Group of Seven, and um, I I think it, you know it, the influences were were vast. I, I, um, Aaron Siskin, Thank uh, thanks so much. And uh, another, you know, I wasn't aware of, of photography um, as an art form until going to school, you know. Uh, you know, and certainly, you know, the Ansel Adams and, and all of that. You know, I, I, I had an experience when I was in Houston, I, or in Austin, um, seeing an Ansel Adams show. And um, how it came about, this, this man had gone to um, a gallery in California, and he wanted to buy his wife an Ansel Adams photograph. And he ended up buying the entire collection. <laughs> and, and so the University of Texas in Austin offered to house it for him. And so he basically donated the work to them. And I don't know if his wife kept one or not. but, but you know, each photographer has a vision and has has something to say, and and I think um, I continue to learn from younger photographers and and uh, everyone. You know, it's it's um, it's something that that you you know we're so familiar with photography as a medium because everybody has a smartphone and it's so easy to just make and send images. Uh, that wasn't the case in, in you know most of my career. It was a very uh, methodical process. But um, you know Canada has some exceptional photographers, and um, I, I've uh, worked and, and gotten to know several of those over the years. 
I think one of the most influential photographers, although I never got to meet him in person, was Minor White. And he did a book called Light to the Seventh Power. And he talked about the physical qualities of light and also the spiritual qualities of light. And so he really looked at, um, in his photographs, he, he was really interested in transcending the, the physical reality and and taking you to another place through uh, his imagery. And I, I was very moved by his work. And um, I did go to Rochester um, to where he had taught, but uh, he was no longer there. I think he was no longer living. I, I met a woman who had studied with him, and she told me an experience of walking in the desert. He taught her to walk and not leave a footprint. And to, to walk in nature without leaving your mark, you know, and it was, it was an incredibly sensitive approach um, and, and really, um, I guess, an understanding of how the First Nations view uh, uh, nature as, as, um, as a sacred space that we all inhabit and, um, and leaving it just as you find it and not, um, you know, not disturbing, you know, even by leaving your footprints on the scene. So uh, he, he was certainly a, a great influence on me. And he's um, passed on into the, <laughs> the other dimensions.